Last month, I took you to the red carpet to celebrate Dead and Buried Treasure's fourth season with series creator Eric Sprouse. Well, the special was too big to be contained in just one episode. Tonight, we get you ready for part two of the Dead and Buried Treasure's anniversary special. Give you a sneak peek at tonight's movie and answer some of your mailbag anniversary related questions. Stick around. It's coming up next. Yeah! Welcome to Walk the Plank, the Dead and Buried Treasures pre-show. I'm your host, Rich Kanji, and, well, oh, there he is. I thought I'd give you a different look this time. Like, everybody says, why do you always do it from the studio, you know, and everything when you record at home and everything? So, I thought I'd just show you, like, I'm doing it from my uh, my celebrity home. That's <laughs> 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 a new, you remember Cribs from the 1990s or maybe early 21st century? Is that still even on? Yeah, I don't know if it's still on, but yeah, I do remember. Yeah, that. where they do like the celebrity homes. I'm just at my cabin, like, and I'm just like, this is my background. I have a beautiful wooden background, and it's just, I love it here. So I just want to give you something a little different. Rich, how are you tonight? I'm great. Uh, as you can see, joining me from his uh, humble abode is uh, series creator Eric Sprouse. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Rich. As always, it's a lot of fun. Well, here we are again for, uh, I guess, part two of an anniversary special. So why are we having a part two anniversary? Because <laughs> it's just that big, Rich. <laughs> Too big to be contained no, in almost, one episode. Well, to be honest, it's all my fault. Uh, when we did the idea of having an anniversary show, we still got the look we wanted. We wanted to do it like an award show, but like an anniversary show. Um, we're going to do it all in one show. But the more we got involved, the more blooper reels, the more people we got involved to do interviews on the show and the more ideas we had for behind the scenes and uh, interviews and things like that. I didn't want to shortchange anybody. So I thought, well, you know, the thing ran like, <laughs> the thing could have run about five, six hours with the one movie. Mm -hmm. So we cut down the movie a bit and we saved some stuff for the second episode, which would be the one you're going to watch tonight. And then uh, we ran it like it was. And then we came to the end that we already had shot. It was like, Ugh. so we ended it with me on the ship with Davy and Jack to continue it into tonight. And I said, let's host Nightmare Castle, completely different movie, and uh, do something like that. And so when we did and we transitioned to tonight, we almost didn't have time tonight. I probably could have taken Nightmare Castle completely out of the context and had a movie well that's not true i actually timed it today it was about two hours and nightmare castle is a little cut up so uh obviously i didn't want to cut anybody out who was on the show so we just lengthened it into two nights and we had it as a, an extravaganza <laughs> when to be honest it was all an idiocy move on my part so blame me well you know, that's that's great, though, because uh, people get to see more behind the scenes of what goes into making this series and yeah. uh, more interviews. And uh, I, I think it's great that I had so much fun doing the first part of the anniversary special, and I had even more fun watching it. You did a great job putting yeah. it together. Yeah, I had a blast. It was nice because uh, we had the tuxedos on. We were doing something a little out of the norm. I like to do new stuff on mm -hmm. the show once in a while, like 
this is probably going to be our, I will say this, this will be our last anniversary show for a while because that sucker's a lot to put together. Um, and I've been editing around the clock with the, uh, the podcast and, of course, uh, the show and the movie and planning the next one and, re and writing scripts for upcoming adventures. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do once. It's, a, it's like having kids, and maybe you can relate. Yeah, it's like it's great to have kids, someone else's. Yeah. <laughs> Give them back. Yeah, feed, feed them full of sugar and send them home. Yeah, that's. Uh, but that's it. Was a lot of fun and we had a good time with it. So hey, here we are. We got another movie. We got another exciting uh, extension of uh, the anniversary special. So can't complain. That's right, and with a brand new movie, uh, Barbara Steele is making a comeback to Dead and Buried Treasures, yep. uh, and you have Nightmare Castle this time. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Good. Tell movie. us about uh, that. Well, it was originally called Night of the Doomed, and I think that was the Italian version. I'm not even sure of that. I know that there was an Italian version, obviously. And, and then I think when they released it in the States, they released it as Nightmare Castle. And, of course, Barbara Steele was the, screen, the original screen, Scream Queen, even before Jamie Lee Curtis was. And uh, she was well known for a lot of her horror films. Uh, it just kind of came out that way. It's a great movie. It's another one of those kind of, like, uh, eerie, what's going to happen. It's not like explosions and blockbusters like that, but it's a really good ghost story. And a lot of her films have that eerie mood where uh, it can successfully tell a great ghost story, a lot like Tales from the Crypt. Um, but it is a good feature, and uh, we're looking forward to hosting it tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, she has a dual role in that, right? She'll play like a, an evil twin or something? Yeah, she has a dual role in this one, and you'll, I don't think I'm Barbara Steele loves to like die in her movies, <laughs> but uh, she comes back as a couple people in a way. I don't want to reveal too much of the plot uh, lost, but um, uh, she does a, a great job at uh, dual roles playing herself. And, and you know, she doesn't just come back and play two roles in this like this, the same person, just they change the hair color kind of thing. She does a really good job at being a a crazy and being a countess, like where she's like above everyone else. And of course, the uh, the the innocent sister kind of thing. So it's a challenge and it's a lot of fun. And I'm, I think that uh, our fans will like it tonight. Our viewers will really like it. Exciting, morbid, perverse, ambiguous, enigmatic, more fascinating than ever. Barbara Steele in an original and passionate interpretation of the double role of Muriel and Jenny. Jenny, tender, fragile, romantic. Muriel, perfidious, dangerous, sensual. Two beings bound by a single fate and a single sinister secret. Two contrasting individuals, two opposite and distinct personalities. One woman with two faces, or two women with the same face, but profoundly different. A fearful doubt, a sinister enigma, which becomes an obsessive nightmare in the night of the doom. The story of a guilty and frenzied passion which lives beyond the borders of death. Ah! Victim of the sorcery of a merciless and diabolical sadist. I'll stay with you with my body and my senses until someone comes and destroys my heart. Now that damned voice will be silent forever and then we'll be rid of you once and for all! Shut up, Stephen! I can't stand it! In the blood-curdling atmosphere of a thrilling drama in which the forces of evil unleash their sorcery and open the gates of the unknown, reality and nightmare merge, sweeping the possessed lovers into the night of the doom. About last night, it wasn't just an hallucination. It was 
something unreal and mysterious. And when I was in bed, I knew I was with you when I heard the heartbeats. I was awake, and also when you... I know, my dear. You told me. But it can't have been anything but delirium in your mind. Your wife is not mad, but she runs the risk of becoming so if she continues to live here in this castle. Is it perhaps the eye of a sick mind which calls up visions that trespass upon the other world? Or are they the fears, the boundless hatred and terror of a monstrous reality that drag a human being to the edge of madness? The Night of the Doom, a human drama that goes beyond human life. The Night of the Doom, a film that will take your breath away, that will hold you spellbound, that you will never forget. Produced by Cinematografica Emichi and directed by Alan Grunwald. Soon on this screen. Well, that looks great. Double your pleasure, double your fun, double Barbara Steele. Yeah, and you can see how they used the Italian release. That's why they did the trailer that way, because uh, I don't think there's any trailer out there that says Nightmare Castle. It all says uh, Night of the Doomed. And uh, in fact, the actual movie itself uh, is the only thing I know that says Nightmare Castle. You'll see that tonight. Very good, very good. So uh, we're moving this right along because we have a lot of mailbag questions relating to uh, part one of the anniversary special. So yeah, they were flooding us. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to dive into those now. This uh, second part here because we got a lot to get through, and we're going to try to get through them all. If not, uh, I'm sure we'll you'll answer some of these on possibly, maybe, possibly your uh, post show. Pirate's booty. Right. We got, there's more, actually, there's more questions than the ones that just you have. We probably had uh, four or five dozen responses to our anniversary show. And, and it's uh, at the time of this particular recording, it's our YouTube premiere. Um, so we'll probably get phone calls that are interrupting us during this too. Who knows? Wow. All right. We're going to dive right into these because. Sure. You know, I love the mailbag. I love the viewers. Bring it on. What do we got? All right. So uh, first question is from Stacy Falco in Travis Town, New Jersey. She writes, I just watched part one of your anniversary show and loved it. It was really interesting watching you go behind the scenes. And the movie was very creepy. Wonderful job. I can't wait to see part two. So that's more of a compliment than a question. Right. Thank you. That's great, Stacy. Thanks. Uh, Gary Kukowski, if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry, from Scottsdale, Delaware, writes, I'm a big fan of monster movies, and I love your show. Your first anniversary show was more than extremely well done. I saw, however, that when you do part two, you don't have Nightmare Castle included. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, I think I explained this before. We just ran out of time during the first one, Gary, Gary right? Mm -hmm. Um we just ran out of time with uh, the first movie and we had to do a layover into a second film. So that's why we did this. The very first time we did an anniversary show uh, was a couple years ago. And it really wasn't an anniversary show, even though we kind of played it as one where it was really an episode of the show. And no one really knew that until a certain uh, Rich Kanji, I'm sorry, until a certain uh, Dr. Walter time appeared at the end and he was the villain, you know? So we wanted to be as thorough as he could and, and do both movies for the price of one this time around. That's great. Uh, Jonesy Ferrero from Pottstown, Tennessee writes, I think the women on your show are very pretty. And while I'm in love with both of them, meaning Maribel and Professor Gertie, I'm very intrigued with the siren. I love how you don't show her, but at the same time, I want to know who she is. I loved her interview on the show. Will you be doing a T-shirt of her as well? I love your gimmick. I guess that was more so for me. <laughs> uh, you know, that is our show. That, or that is a question more guaranteed or geared toward you because people may not know this at home, but our, um, uh, uh, our host tonight is the one who does a lot of the artwork, all the artwork for Dead and Buried Treasures. So I don't know. I'd love to see a T-shirt. I really would. I'd like to see one from Mirabella and Professor Gertie. Who doesn't love those two? And, uh, the siren. So I don't know. What do you think, Rich? Uh, 
<laughs> it's it's definitely coming. Uh, I'm working on the Gertie shirt now, followed Good. by Marabella. And I would like to do yeah, maybe awesome. all three women is like uh, the women of Dead and Buried Treasures, you know, girl power kind of shirt with Marabella, Gertie, and the Siren well, together. You know, it's not a bad idea, but I'm not sure if you can because we have a couple women about to join the show. That's true. It's getting bigger. The cast is getting bigger. It is. All right. Uh, next so it's question. around the corner. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, Jasmine Cruz writes, you gentlemen look very sexy in your tuxedos. Thank you. <clears throat> I love how you treated this show as an award show event. I loved going behind the scenes. I watch you on the Vortex and now see you every week on DBNA TV on Saturdays and Sundays at night. Very it's cool. well crafted, and I thought it was on NBC. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I, I don't know if it's NBC quality, but I mean, hey, we got an Emmy nomination, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but thanks for the kind words. That's great. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Lots of positive feedback so far. Yeah. Uh, we have another one here. Uh, this one's uh, local, Bethel Park. So. She's obviously in your BPTV viewing area. Cool. Uh, Lizzie Stewart from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania writes, I see you get letters from all over. And sorry to disappoint, but I'm just from your stations in hometown Bethel Park, where I watch you on BPTV. You're one of the best shows I've seen, not only on BPTV, but anywhere. You guys are so creative and you're funny. I love your cast of robotic animals like Scallywag, Jack, Davy Bones, and some of the villains. When will we ever see you at a horror con in the area? Good question. Uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't call Jack and Davy and Scallywag robotic to their faces. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not disappointed. I'm, I'm glad to have uh, viewers in Bethel Park. It's the whole reason we started here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that we're expanding, but it's nice to have viewers at home, too, uh, in Pittsburgh. Um, as far as the conventions, uh, you know, it's hard to say. COVID, COVID ruined everything. So, um, you know, it, now that the conventions are starting to open up, and I know some of them act, are actually outdoors now. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is, but, um, you know, things are starting to get back to... Um, I want, I want to say normal, but COVID's still here, so I can't say get back to normal. Um, but as conventions open up more and more, we can be more selective as to what we go to and how we go. There was some convention I think you introduced me to, Rich. Uh, was it last year, 2020, where they had like an outdoor convention, but you had like parking spaces or something to go to i thought that was creative during that yeah they they sometimes do like outdoor flea markets at some of these conventions that yeah. kind of thing uh, i believe it was new dimension comics that that uh was doing that yeah and i'd the love intense. to go to a convention i really i really miss uh getting in there and meeting people and you know and my you know this isn't our jobs we do this for fun so by trade i'm a communication professor <laughs> So I miss meeting everybody one on one, one on one, and and talking and and uh, getting to meet people and uh, you know Steel City Con and uh, the thing that's disheartening to me is like they get tens of thousands of people at any door time in Steel City and it's just like you're you're like this and I'm like I don't know if I'm ready for that. Uh, I wish yeah. they would have like a limit, and then when you come out, you let people in kind of thing. Like if you're gonna have five thousand in there, then have five thousand. Don't have ten thousand. Or 20,000, you know, and say, oh boy, and have like dollar signs forming on the guy's eyeballs. <laughs> have it limited so people can enjoy it more. Who enjoys it when it's like this to begin with? Right. So um, I don't know. We're going to try. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next question Terry Bettis from Jonasville, Oklahoma writes I know you've probably discussed this a thousand times already. So now it's a thousand one. I can't wait for the battle and even more. So the double agent thing has really got me intrigued. Everyone seems to have a movie or a motive except Scallywag. I know you can't tell us who it is, but how about a clue? Yeah. How about a clue? I don't know. That dreaded Scallywag almost blew up me ship. Um, 
a clue. Uh, man. A clue. Well, I've had a lot of people guess at who it is. I guess, I don't know. I can't really think of a clue other than um, it's somebody on the show that Drake has had immediate access to. I, I don't know what a clue would be. I, I will say I've had a lot of people give me guesses like uh, Gertie or um, Mirabella or Reggie or even Jasper. And I don't think anybody's ever said to me, Jack. So, you know, I always like to take the, the show in a, in a direction that you see, you don't see coming. So, mm -hmm. If I really wanted to do it, I'd make it Jack. <laughs> well, then, I'd have anybody, hate really. then I'd have hate mail. <laughs> there are people out there that love Jack. In fact, Phoenix Comics and Toys made just a Jack and Davy Bones statue that I guess is part of their new board game that they're releasing for all horror hosts. So um, I, I don't know if I can really provide a clue other than uh, it's coming very soon. This year. Mm. I can't wait. Uh, Ricardo Ford from Leighton Town, Alabama writes, I'm a big fan of pirate lore, and your show makes me want to watch Pirates of the Caribbean. Then, when I watch Pirates of the Caribbean, it makes me want to watch your show. You seriously should be on Disney+. Plus. Your show is the best I've seen uh, hosting monster movies, and it blows... The guy out of the water who is on MeTV with the rubber chicken. <laughs> oh, good one. Uh, it's it's not even a comparison. When will you guys be at the Renaissance Festival in Pittsburgh this year? Uh, thank you for the compliment. That's great. The guy with the rubber yeah, well, chicken. He says the guy with the rubber chicken. I guess he is that is that Sven Gulli? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, wow. That's that's, that's a huge compliment. compliment. Sven Gulli's pretty I, big. I, I will say, and I know he's out of Chicago. I, I will say, yeah, I agree. I think we should be on Disney Plus. So, if Disney, anybody from Disney Plus is watching, give us a call. Here's my net, here's my email address. Call us here <laughs> or write us here. <laughs> um, the Ren Fest, uh, you know, we weren't able to do it the last couple of years because of COVID. So, I'm hoping that they open up the Ren Fest to be more admissible this year to everybody. Uh, I know that. The year before COVID, uh, I did go out there as Captain Drake, and we actually had a contest that said, come find me. If you found me, we'd give you a, I don't remember what it was we gave out, uh, maybe Krispy Kreme donuts or something or something like that. But like, uh, yeah, we should be out there, you know, walking the grounds. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll dress up as Calico Drake and have another contest like that. That was a lot of fun. That's great. So we got time for one more question here. Uh, Wow. Yeah, it's it time goes fast. Uh Man, it really Janice goes, like the movie's Rat on Walsh. next though. I'm sorry. I said it really goes fast and it seems like we just started. I know. I know. Uh Janice Rothwowski from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania writes, Your anniversary show was top notch. I feel like it was watching something on networks and regional television here in Pittsburgh area. Uh the Pittsburgh area should be proud to carry you as part of their lineup. I've I have several questions. So let me see if I can consolidate them. Will you be part of the Whiskey Rebellion in Washington, Pennsylvania in July, the Renaissance Festival in Mars, Pennsylvania in September, Steel City Con Pittsburgh in August, or the pirate boat they have down on the river uh that's in downtown Pittsburgh? It would be awesome to see you at any of those. Uh, yes to all of that. Um, we, the Whiskey Rebellion is right around the corner. That's in mm -hmm. July. Uh, if you're watching this after that, it just happened. So I have plans to be in there, uh, in, in some capacity. A lot, fortunately, a lot of what she asks are outdoor events. And that makes me and uh, probably the whole cast and crew feel a little bit safer knowing that, uh, it's uh, more difficult to catch COVID that way, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so Whiskey Rebellion, I know that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I go to that every year. Um, the Renaissance Festival plans to do that as well. Steel City Con, eh, <laughs> it, 
I really would like to do it. There's just so many yeah. people, and not just because of COVID, just because it's plain old freaking crowded as the devil. You never get anything done, and now that they get all the bigger stars, and there's even more need. And I don't know. We I feel like we kind of get overshadowed there. But uh, what was the other place? Oh, the pirate ship. Yeah, there's yeah. a pirate ship in downtown Pittsburgh. It goes right out on the river, and I think it's just called the pirate ship. Dot com, you have to Google it, but I know it is, and uh, I've seen that ship. It's really cool. You know, they go out there after pirate games and things like that. So uh, I've already talked to that guy on it, actually. So we might be able to do something uh, with them as either a sponsor on our show or as a sponsor on their ship, where mm -hmm. I come out in a, in a cameo one night and just appear as Captain Drake. And I know that we've had a lot of uh, viewer mail about that, appearing uh, out of nowhere just to do a, a cameo as Captain Drake on the pirate ship, the actual mm -hmm. ship. So I think that would be a lot of fun. So I'd say yes to all of those in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. That's great. Well, we look forward to that. And um, that's all the time we have. We have to get you, we got to get you this huge anniversary special, part two anniversary special. Yeah, we're not, quite on, the, we're not quite on the red carpet tonight, but it'll still be a lot of fun. Right. Right. So it's still. Uh, it's still going to give you all the fun and uh, behind the scenes interviews that we had in part one. You oh, know? Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so we'll get to host that part two coming up next. And uh, don't forget tonight's movie, Barbara Steele, Nightmare Castle. just can't get enough of dead and buried treasures? You say you want to jam an earring into your lobe because you want to be a pirate so much? And you love ghost stories and other haunted tales to boot and just can't wait for the weekend? Well, before you cause a lawsuit or need a doctor, check out this bonus during the week. Wicked Wednesday Watch Party. That's right, fiends. Join us on Facebook every Wednesday night at 9. A much earlier time slot for all the little babies out there. For rebroadcasts of Dead and Buried Treasures classics. Often discussing the show in the chat room with Calico Drake himself. Along with other stars of the show. Plus, if you turn into our Facebook page at 830 you'll see a classic episode of Walk the Plank to gear you up for the night ahead. That's Wicked Wednesday Watch Parties, premiering at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, each Wednesday night, if you dare. 8.30 p.m. with Walk the Plank. But remember, only the truly courageous will make it to the end. <laughs> Arr, it's the Pirate's Booty, our after show, seen immediately after Dead and Buried Treasures ends. Captain Calico Drake and series creator Eric Sprouse take your calls for up to an hour, answering questions about the series or whatever's on your mind about the Swashbuckler's Haunt, the club, convention appearances, and much more. That's our after show, the Pirate's Booty, taking your booty calls till the wee hours of the morning, immediately following Dead and Buried Treasures on most affiliates.